Hi guys, how are you? How was your weekend? Uh, another brand new week, brand new start. So how are we going to spend it? So for me, the start of the week, as usual, my day always starts with my yoga uh, and I always listen to stuff while I'm doing my exercises. Uh, so yeah, I watched this awesome uh, interview uh, with uh, Joe Dispenza and Bruce Lipton. It's kind of half-half. So I'm going to share the link and uh, that was pretty uh, mind-altering experience. Uh, I'm sure many of you know of uh, work of uh, either uh, Joe Dispenza or Bruce Lipton or both. Uh, they are really smart guys, actually, they're looking at things from a scientific perspective, so there is a proof, there is a proof. And uh, yeah, this particular video, it was kind of like a, uh, put together from different interviews uh, that um, this gentleman that uh, interviews them um, put like a snippets of different interviews where he tries to get the message across and uh, I really highly recommend to watch it because this year we have the nodal uh, axis changing as I mentioned before they will be changing uh, from the Taurus Scorpio axis into Aries Libra axis and the north node is going into Aries so that's all about self-discovery so the attention will be more on who am I like I think all this that's happening right now with you know what is your values uh, like uh, you know this Neptune dissolving everything and Venus now going through Neptune dissolving everything and actually I forgot to mention in my video about Venus transiting through Neptune she will be uh, making an aspect to Pluto and uh, Mercury so obviously everything that the Mercury learned uh, retrograding in the sign of Capricorn and you know conjuncting with uh, Pluto he will obviously make a conjunction with Pluto he will pass on the information like okay this is what's still needed you know in order for um, self-empowerment and uh, then it will make an aspect it will make a, a sextile to Venus uh, before Venus exits the sign of Pisces and enters the signs of Aries which is all about new beginning and there will be the information given so Venus will know what needs to be done what is the thing that still um, needs to be integrated let go of and then start a, a new a new thing, new beginning in regard to our values, uh, thought and stuff like that. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. It's a little bit side note <laughs> because I forgot last time. Always after I finish recording video, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to say this. Um, so what I wanted to say is this interview with Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza, I think it's a really good, I mean, it's not even a new interview, it's a few years old, uh, but very valid, now valid even probably more than ever because of the energies that we are facing this year. And uh, like I said, with this nodal axis and everything that's happening right now is kind of like preparing us for that. And then during the um, year and a half uh, time when, uh, because usually nodes are in one sign for 18 months uh, so from summer this year until January 2025 like the end of next year 2024 beginning of 2025 I think it's the end of next year so 18 months give or take uh, 18 and a half months uh, so this will be the time where the attention will completely shift uh, so as we could experience with the nodes when they were in the sign of Gemini and uh, Sagittarius what was going on like all these conspiracy theories and is it true is it not true it's like all this information coming out obviously 2020 until a year ago it was all about that all about this information now past year what what what, I, what is the main theme that, that we're talking about resources money control who's got the power who's got the control how we feel how we feel disempowered because somebody else uh, has uh, control over the resources which is for our survival all taurus and scorpio themes and now when the nodes will change into the sign of aries and libra uh, the attention will be on who am i discovering myself aries is this new instinctual energy is like a newborn baby that is learning everything anew so it will be a time of self-discovery and uh, coming the south node going through the sign of uh, Libra obviously it depends where it is in your chart so it will have like a more deeper specification and uh, meaning but just generally south node going through the sign of uh, Libra is all about uh, okay I know how to please everybody else but what about me so it uh, the energy will shift uh, it's not necessarily just like it, it can be but it doesn't have to be just this selfish energy like it's all about me and you know be narcissistic it's more about what do I need who am I you know like uh, searching for for ourselves like who we really are as I said the repeating theme what are our values what are our needs what do we need in relationships uh, what is our truth what is our perception of reality because based on that we, we, we manifest we create 
And uh, uh, so I think uh, people like these two gentlemen that I mentioned, Joe Dispenza and uh, Bruce Lipton, they have, they have they have the key to a lot of this, to to uncovering the, the meaning of of reality and uh, the pathway to recognizing who you really are and how you can manifest the life you want for yourself. Uh, because like uh, Bruce Lipton is saying that if you try to manifest from the material, it will take a long time because you you using matter for matter. Actually, it could have been even Joe Dispenza. They all have both have very similar message, but it it's saying about if you you just tapping into the known uh, it's going to take a long time and it's just going to create what you already know it's it's important to tap into the unknown into the source because that's where all the all the stuff lies that's where it all comes from and then it's much easier to to manifest the reality that we want because tapping into the known we're only going to manifest what we what we already had and uh, even to manifest what we want, which we don't have, that it's going to take a long time or we don't, we don't know how to do it. Whereas uh, actually opening up ourselves up to, to what we don't know, to the unknown, could leave, uh, lead to the results that uh, are unforeseeable and they could be much better results than what we expected. It's just this fear of unknown that we don't even want to try. But I believe, I feel that with the energies that we have now uh, coming into the into the play already happening obviously i think it all started properly uh with the new moon in aquarius and now with all the transits all the planets going forward and then we'll have the planets changing sign in march as spoken before with uh, saturn changing sign going into pisces uh, uh pluto uh, for three months dipping its toes into the sign of aquarius and then uh, in uh, May, uh, Jupiter will be going from Taurus, no, from Aries to Taurus. And uh, also Mars will be going from um, Gemini into Cancer. And then in summer, we have the nodes, nodal shift, which will be a big thing because then when Pluto will go back into Capricorn to do his little retrograde, uh, it will square the nodes. So again, this will be about what still needs doing in order to feel self-empowered. And actually then when the nodes will shift eventually uh, in 2025, will shift into the Pisces Virgo axis, it will be all this liberation from from this uh, guilt and shame, this generational guilt and shame, and we're not good enough and we have to be perfect. But for that to happen, we need to discover more about ourselves. And that's why this uh, video that I just watched today, like for me anyway, I'm not saying this is the truth for everyone. And I want to state this as I do in every video, that this is my subjective perception of reality. I am sharing this information because I find them helpful and perhaps they will be helpful to someone else. But I am not saying in any way that this is the universal truth or this is applicable to everyone or trying to push my opinions. I'm just sharing what I find valuable because because I, I wish somebody shared with this this with me 10 years ago <laughs> and then I wouldn't have to go through all the experience I've gone through hard way to learn this. Um, so anyway, uh, this material, I think it, it's going to be really, really uh, in the forefront. People, people will be looking for a new ways. They will be looking for uh, new, new ways to, to, to see themselves and to create a reality. I also have a feeling that probably people who are stuck in dysfunctional uh, relationship, probably they will actually find the courage or the momentum to, to come out of those relationships. Or they will discover themselves and perhaps through self-growth and both parties uh, growing and, uh, you know, working on themselves, they will transform the, the quality of the relationships that they are at. It can be romantic relationship, it could be just relationship any relationship that we have with people around us because Libra is all about the one-on-one -on -one interaction but it's uh, it's our relationship it's how we relate to the other other than ourselves because ourselves is the Taurus Venus uh, Taurus but Venus actually the ruler uh, of Taurus is also the ruler of um, is the ruler of uh, Libra so currently the ruler of the North Node will still remain to be a ruler of the North Node and current ruler of uh, South Node, which is uh, Scorpio, it, the ruler is Pluto, but actually the traditional ruler is uh, Mars. 
and that will again remain to be the ruler because when the south node moves into Aries, uh, Aries is ruled by Mars. So it feels that these themes that currently we are learning, you know, in regards of our essential needs, values, what we need in relationship, how we're going to survive, how we want to create the reality that supports us and uh, our also how we want to become self-reliant and self-sufficient uh, to be able to take care of ourselves. Uh, this then this learned knowledge through these nodes going through this axis will then be applied and continue its growth through the next two signs, the Aries and the Libra. Like, okay, I, I've learned this and now how am I going to put it in action? Because uh, Aries is all about action. Obviously, it's a uh, is this new energy? It's got this fire. It wants to create things. It's it's the spring. It's the beginning of the of the year in nature, the astrological year as well. So that's that's what's uh, what's the energy I think I feel for the for the year ahead. And also in regards of the relationship, I really loved what uh, Joe Dispenza in this video, uh, which I am going to link and also share. Um, what he actually talks about, it's, I, I really love it because he said that, uh, um, this is what he said, uh, I will never work on my relationship. He said there is like, he doesn't see the, the logic in it to work on relationship. He said that uh, I, I will, um, you know, obviously, like if you are in relationship, he said, you know, you, you're supposed to be putting the best of you in the relationship and the other person also, you know, you, you put you to, do you put the best of yourself in the relationship and the other person also, uh, hopefully, if you are in a good one. <laughs> and uh, then he said that if the relationship uh, doesn't work, then uh, I step back and ask uh, what is there about myself that I need to look at and change. And uh, that's what he says, you know, like if 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 the things are not working, then obviously all the relationship, all the external is a reflection of us. So it's like a mirror to what is within us because we are learning through relationships. So they provide the mirror through which we learn more about ourselves. It's the Aries Libra axis. So Aries is me. The Libra is you. And then through you, I learn about me because if I don't have this mirror, then I don't know I exist because uh, it's, you know, it's the mirroring, right? So, um, so that's practically what he's saying that, uh, that, you know, if the relationships don't work, then you have to look at yourself. What is it in me that is making the relationship don't work? Obviously, I know, uh, you know, there is the saying that it takes two to tango, it takes two for the relationship to work but if both people work on themselves and do their best and it still doesn't work then you know uh, are, are you a vibrational match and that's I guess what these uh, nodes moving into Aries and Libra are going to let us know like are we are we in the correct relationships or not are the people we are surrounding ourselves with and interacting with on daily basis are, are they our tribe because Aquarius is like a community. It's, uh, it's the age we heading towards uh, the Aquarian life where, where people will be, um, they don't necessarily will be getting on with everyone, but the people that they will be wanting to be surrounded with are people who are like-minded, people who think in a similar way, have the same values, uh, are working towards the same goal. That's the Aquarian age. It's it's kind of a little bit detached. So it's not like this Libra that I want to be friend with everyone and I want to please everyone and I want there to be a balance. And, you know, it's all usually through crisis that that happens. But uh, Aquarius is not like that. Aquarius is like, okay, you know, you, you either, you know, you're my friend or you're not. And it all goes, also it's like, you know, the um, air... Um, <laughs> <laughs> through the modality you have the gemini uh the libra and the um, aquarius so the gemini gathers the information the libra goes okay how, how do we relate and then the aquarius goes with okay you with me or you're not you know like are you part of my tribe or not so that's pretty much what's uh the energies that uh that will be happening or are happening already that uh through this um aries and libra axis we'll be learning about ourselves we'll be discovering ourselves uh, i think there will be much more even more than up till now and there already is a lot of interest in self-growth like a lot of people are seeking courses uh, how to obviously develop skills but also learning about themselves more and more people are interested to uh to 
work on themselves, to discover themselves, to find out who they are and what makes them tick and, uh, you know, work on their on, on their issues, on their traumas, uh, not to fix themselves because we're not broken, but, you know, to, to kind of learn to understand ourselves better and heal and integrate that parts of ourselves which were rejected and then cause us to uh, get triggered, to get triggered and also to project. And uh, through learning about ourselves, then we have a better recognition of whether uh, that which we are surrounded by, it resonates with us or doesn't, because our environment always reflects back to us and also we learn through it. So then what do we learn, right? So anyway, so in this video, like I said, I, I found a lot of uh, a lot of wisdom and I would like to share it and I, I would like to invite people to, you know, to, to if they have time to, to watch it. I, I didn't watch it all at once. It's two hours long. And so because like I said, it's snippets of different interviews put together to like uh, broadcast this this message. And uh, I, I watched it in parts and uh, it, it is something that I will definitely go back to. And uh, I really... I, I really would like to offer it uh, to people. It's obviously not my material, but I'm I'm happy to share. I'm happy to again uh, show uh, show somebody else's material for people to maybe consider uh, to give them a different perception of reality or different idea or maybe a different direction they can walk on. And um, yeah, there was um, there was another thing uh, that um, um, one of them. <laughs> I think it was uh, Bruce Lipton actually uh, said that we've got it all wrong. We don't see things how they are, but we see them how we are. And that is so true because uh, we always consider everything. We also always put it through the filter of us. Like, how do I perceive reality? So because it's all subjective, isn't it? Like I said, that there, there are uh, some truths which are universal truths, which are you know, universally agreed on that this is true. Yeah, if you throw something in the air, it's going to fall on the floor because there is a gravity, right, in action, at least uh, on this planet. But uh, there are a lot of truths which we think they are truth and we also share in them like, oh, yeah, this is true. But is it really? Or is it just like our subjective perception of reality? And uh, and then uh, these two gentlemen are offering a way how we can actually deprogram the way we uh, see reality because as both of them you know are discussing that majority of the day we are run by our subconscious ninety five percent of the day and uh, this ninety five percent of the day which we are run on our subconscious more most of it uh, is run by the programs that are not even ours. Uh, like the, most of them are not even ours because they were put into us when uh, we were programmed by these when we are we were little by our environment by our parents our culture our religions our teachers our friends like everybody that surrounded us the environment that we were influenced by uh, when we were little and these programs are in our subconscious and they run our day they run our life and then as Bruce Lipton actually said that 60% of these programs are actually uh, it actually they actually don't serve us they actually don't uh, they are limiting they are limiting us and uh, they are don't they don't allow us to actually create the reality that we want to create because he said that you know if 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 we have a desire uh, or a need or want to have something in our life for most people is money like most people are obviously uh, worrying about money uh, and we don't see it, then there is obviously a program in us that is uh, not an, a, enable, uh, is enabling us, is not enabling us to create the environment or create something that would lead to this outcome. And uh, that's what they both uh, talking about in this uh, interview. Like um, they have workshops and obviously they both wrote books and stuff like that when they teach people how to do it more step-by-step -step process, but they're just giving uh, like the theory and the, the ideology of this that uh, actually this is this is how it is, uh, that a majority of the day we are being run by our subconscious, uh, which is uh, programmed by programs that are most of them not even ours. They're in, uh, they were somebody else's program, somebody else's truth. And then uh, the 5% of the time when we are actually conscious and we want to create something that we want, it doesn't always happen because these subconscious programs are not an, uh, enabling it. So um, it's it's really crazy, guys. <laughs> it's crazy. And then when we start thinking about it, it's like a, this big, deep rabbit hole we can get into. Uh, but uh, as I said, 
I really recommend watching these videos. Maybe some of you already have seen it. And like I said, probably some of you follow these uh, two gentlemen and their material is not new to you. You are familiar with their work and it's nothing surprising, nothing new for you. Maybe some of you already live this kind of life where you apply in these principles and enjoying the benefits of those. And uh, maybe for some of you it's new. Like uh, I've only... Uh, started my process of awakening just over three years ago so a lot of this material is new to me and that's why i i you know i'm happy to share uh my journey um how i'm learning and perhaps uh, it will be beneficial to someone else or helpful and if not then at least uh, i'm entertaining myself here <laughs> so anyway guys uh, i i will put the links and um, like i said there is a lot of energies uh, that are going to kind of create the pressure on us uh, to to walk in this direction, direction of change, uh, direction through which we will be forced to start learning more about ourselves individually, because Aquarius is all about individuation process. So it's no longer um, agreeing to what we've been told or, um, like I said, the agreed values of everyone else. Um, but it's more about seeking what it is for me and how I want to manifest it. And it's not selfish because you cannot give from an empty cup. That is the Virgo Pisces. That is the Virgo Pisces axis. That is the 2000 years of uh, Catholic Church influence, which I keep mentioning, but is the repeated theme. It's the something that I come across in like most charts because this is how our collective have been programmed and influenced very heavily for past 2000 years and it's not easy it's not easy to get out of it and there is this inherent uh, feeling of shame and guilt and not good enough and the striving for perfection whether it's a physical or perfection in any other ways and we can see where 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 it's heading in the world where it got us this this uh, striving for perfection and how self destructory it can be uh, for a lot of people and how a lot of people suffer um, uh, uh, physically, emotionally and mentally because of this, because they don't feel they're good enough, they don't feel they deserve. And this is the um, the shadow side of Virgo, where it's trying so hard, it's trying so hard to be to be perfect. Uh, and then it's, it, it, it causes this uh, feeling of guilt and shame because, because we cannot be perfect because we're human. I mean, we are perfect in our imperfection, but... Um, Anyway, so that's a completely different rabbit hole. I don't want to go too much into that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going back, circling back to Joe Dispenza and Bruce Lipton. Amazing two gentlemen. I'm so grateful that I came across their work. Like I said, I'm still just at the uh, early stages on, uh, of learning more about them. But um, I'm sharing this video with you guys. And uh, if you have time, please check it out. Uh, you can watch it uh, in little in intervals because it's, it's a long video. But it, is, uh, it has the potential to change your life. And uh, that's what's needed because uh, the world is changing and we are changing. And the ch change is inevitable. It's, it's not possible to stop it. So we either try to resist it and it will happen in a painful way or we will just go with it and just see where where the path takes us because like uh, i keep saying it's normally not the unknown that we are afraid of most of the time we are afraid of the known so let's just see what the unknown has to offer for us and this year there'll be plenty of changes plenty of unknown so let's be curious let's be open-minded and just just uh just live with the flow and see what happens Okay, much love. Have a good week, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. <laughs>